Hey everyone, Rogue Guild here, and today I've got a topic I want to discuss with you all that I think is going to generate a lot of interesting ideas, and that is reward. The reason, at least what should be the reason, that drives us to keep playing the game, especially in a looter shooter. Now I'd wager that if you still actively play Division 2 today, you probably aren't playing for any certain reward. Now sure, maybe there's an exotic or two that you're still chasing, but if you played since launch day like myself, there likely aren't any more overarching goals or grand journeys you want, or even can embark on to obtain awesome and lucrative rewards. At this point, we're here because we love the game and the gameplay, which isn't inherently a bad thing, but again, in my view, a looter shooter should provide as many rare, lucrative, and powerful rewards to work towards as possible. Now sure, no matter how great of a loot system you have, no matter how many different epic rewards there are to chase, at some point, someone is going to run out of things to do and go for. It's inevitable. However, I'm of the opinion that in its current state, Division 2 does a pretty lousy job of providing some long-term grind. Now when Warlords first released, I actually think they did a pretty good job of improving from year one and overall satisfying this concept of rewards, and that was in the form of exotics, before the reconfiguration system was introduced. Now I know a lot of people really wanted that to be added in, and that's why the devs did it, but for me, and I know others feel this way too, it completely ruined any sense of long-term grind for rare and lucrative rewards. Before it was added in, exotics felt powerful as they do now, but it wasn't guaranteed that yours was going to be maximized in power every time you got one. You might get a lady death with, uh, I don't know, 12% damage, 11% crit chance and 4% damage to armor. Now that's not too bad of a roll, and you still got the satisfaction of acquiring this rare and inherently powerful item. However, for those who want something to invest their time into, they could continue to grind that whether directly or more passively and work towards getting another Lady Death with the potential for better rolls in the hopes of min-maxing their setup. And if you got a triple god roll prior to the reconfiguration system, it was an awesome feeling. But then, despite the dev saying you had an equal chance of your rolls going up as they did down, the reconfiguration system just completely destroyed any of those feelings, for me at least. You get said exotic once, dump three or four components into it, and you're done. Your rolls are going to be one to two percent off from the max, if not already maxed out. And that was sad, because I felt they had a great thing going with the previous system, but once again, the more casual audience won the devs over. And I'm sorry if you consider yourself a casual, I don't really mean offense by that, but it's pretty widely accepted at this point that part of the reason why this game hasn't succeeded nearly as well as it ought to have is because of how casualized the experience has become. I mean, really, at the end of the day, would it have killed you to run a pestilence with 5-6% to rules off the max value? But at this point, what's in the past is in the past. There's no going back to that previous previous exotic system and reacquiring a more long-term goal for grinding. So what could be added? Well, if we look back to Division 1, what I think largely filled that role was classifieds, but those weren't that perfect. They kind of ruined build diversity once the majority of them were released. They were awesome to grind for and finally obtain, no doubt, but overall had a long-term negative impact on the game in my opinion. So what could be an alternative to exotics or classifieds that provide the same long-term grinding incentive? Well that, my friends, is the topic I want to discuss today, because I've brought quite the idea to the table with me, and that is, you ready? To introduce a new class of gear where you get to create your own talent. Mic drop. All right, I know everyone is freaking out. That wouldn't work. That would be OP, yada, yada. Just calm down, slow your roll. I've created a visual here to help me articulate and explain my idea. No amounts of me continuing to talk are going to help here, so let's switch over to this table I've created. Okay, here it is. This probably looks pretty confusing. Um, don't worry, we're gonna go over all of it and I'll explain what my real, you know, thesis and idea here is. Obviously, it couldn't be a, a deal where you just type in your own text and create your own talent. That would be very OP and broken. But what this is, is more of a a system that would allow you to buff up certain elements of what you want a talent to be, to really make it your own in a system where it's inherently not going to be too broken or OP compared to other things in the game. Let me explain. So you can see at the top there, it says talent creator and a 20 point bank in that red lettering. Now all through the table, you will see red lettering numbers that indicate certain different values that are relevant to this point bank. Basically the idea is the way that you make it so that the talent wouldn't become OP is that you have these different point values assigned to different aspects of the talent so that when you choose these different things you can't exceed 20 points that way you have to inherently nerf certain parts of it so that the talent is balanced so if we look at the first column, we have activation, and all that stuff is in the teal blue. And then we have benefit, duration, and cooldown, kind of the four uh, pillars to what a talent consists of, right? So let's take a look at the activation. I'm just going to go through them. You can see on the left side, upon getting a kill or downing a player, that's one option you could take. You could take any of the ones in this column. What do I have? Seven choices. And before I get too far into this, let me just uh, preface by saying that I've mostly constructed this off of what I would would like to see in Division 1. I know that's not really ideal to a lot of people who haven't played that, but honestly, talents in Division 2 are kind of boring compared to Div 1, in my opinion. Um, 
At least some of them are. And so it's a lot easier for me in my mind to create something that would be relevant to like Div 1 PvP. Of course, this is just an example. There could be, you know, many different options you could go down and paths you could take in this, you know, system structure. So just keep that in mind as we're going through. These are kind of more relevant to Division 1 or what a potential Division 3 might look like if we had, you know, more mobility, more, you know, I don't know, healing, all that kind of stuff that you saw in Division 1. Just keep that in mind while we're going through this. This is just a template, my own ideas, just take of it while you will. So you see on the left side, we have all those activation ones. Upon getting a kill or downing a player is one option you could take. After dealing 150k damage to the same enemy, again, just a placeholder number, I don't really know what that would be, but you get the idea. Upon using a med kit, when you heal your allies for over 300k health in total, after receiving over 200k damage from guns or skills, after dealing 50k damage with your skills, or after remaining in the same piece of cover for 8 seconds. My idea here, and what I would hope this kind of gear item would allow for, is for pretty much every type of build and every type of playstyle to have an option to pick here, right? So I have... Something for skills, I have something for remaining in cover if you're more of a sniper, I have healing if you're a, a healer build. After receiving damage if you're more of a tank, and then obviously if you're a DPS player, you have, you know, getting a kill or dealing damage or using a med kit. So there's options, right? That's the, that's the whole idea here is I want there to be uh, options within this creator so that you could really make the talent that you want. That's the whole purpose of it. So hopefully that... That kind of gives the idea of what you could achieve within that kind of activation column there. And so then each of those have different point values assigned as for how kind of easy it is to do said thing, right? So getting a killer downing a player is has a six point value because that's a bit harder to do than something like using a med kit is nine because that's just one click of a button and you already have the activation, right? So let's move on to the benefit column, the green one in the middle there. This one's kind of the harder one to understand or explain. Basically my idea here was that you could either um, buff up or kind of scale back on the power of the benefit you would gain from the talent in order to fit with the point value and then also tune with the duration and cooldown. So for example, this first one, gain 10 to 25% weapon, skill, and status effect damage for a cost of two through eight with increments of 5%. So if you wanted to save some points in this category, you could go for the 10% uh, damage, right? And then you would only have to put in two points. So that would allow you to have a longer duration or shorter cooldown or whatever. But if you wanted the, the higher benefit, if you wanted 25% damage, then you have to invest eight points. And obviously it goes in between there with increments of 5%. So if you wanted 15, it would be four points and 26 uh, points, right? So there's, there's a scale there so that you can really fit in the amount of points if you only have two left or you know four left however you can kind of see how that fits in with that system for the next one gain five to fifteen percent crit chance and fifteen to thirty percent crit damage uh, with increments of 2% crit chance and 3% crit damage. So at 5 and 15, it would be 2 points. At, uh, what would that be, 7 and 18, it would then be 3 points, right? And then the duration and cooldown are pretty easy to understand there. It just goes up by 1 point every um, increment up. And the cool one, I think, is that for cooldown, I have it at 8 points. You could have no cooldown. You could refresh whatever this buff is if you have the amount of points to allocate for that because it's a very high cost at 8 points, right? So let's see what we could do in this. Let's see, uh, let's see the different possibilities just so you guys can get an idea of what this could really achieve, right? So let's say you're just a regular DPS player. You want just a simple one of getting a kill or downing a player. That's your activation. That's only six points. You have 14 more to spend. So let's say you want to buff up uh, the benefit you get a little bit. Maybe you want to get the full 25% weapon damage there, right? So six and eight, now you're at 14. So you have six points left to spend in the duration and the cooldown. You want to go for three and three. You get that benefit for seven seconds on a 40 second cooldown after the buff expires. Now, maybe that's a little harsh on the cooldown. Again, this is all just a template placeholder numbers just so you can get an idea of what my real idea is here for this whole system, right? Maybe the cooldown to be a bit shorter, I really don't know. Again, that's all on the devs part to balance that. I just want to present the idea here and so you get what I'm going for. Or maybe you're a healer, so you go for the one where when you heal your allies uh, for over 300k health in total, that one's only five, so you have 15 more to spend. Maybe you want to have no cooldown at all, so that adds an eight on the cooldown section. So then I don't know, maybe you want, maybe after you do that, you want 20% damage resilience. That's a pretty nice buff, right? So that costs five, so then you have two left with a five second duration, but it has no cooldown. So if you constantly are healing your allies up, you could really get a high uptime on that 20% damage resilience, which could be really nice for a healer, which is inherently pretty squishy. So you see there's a lot of freedom within this to really create what you want. You could do some really fun ones where when you use a med kit, you get, I don't know, 15% movement speed. So you have, uh, what, that's 12 points there. Then you want to invest seven seconds into that. And then five, you can only get a 20 second cooldown. So it really shaves a lot off. So I'm not going to spend all day going through, you know, hundreds of different variables here. You get the idea that there's a lot of freedom within this to really create something that you want and would really benefit your own playstyle. That's the whole goal with this. And so I hope that comes across well with this table. And I hope that all kind of makes 
sense with the coloring and all that. If you don't fully understand it, then just uh, leave a question in the comments below and I will I will gladly explain what my, my whole idea is here with this. Okay, well I hope that table helped and that the idea of letting players create their own talent makes a bit more sense now. I very much believe that if the devs were to stick to that structure of a point bank, then something like this could definitely work, either in Division 2 or in a Division 3 like I was mentioning. Now there's also the question of the gear items themselves. What would they be? How would you get them? Well, I feel like they would need to be their own new rarity tier. People have suggested countless times that we have a black market rarity, and so if that's what they'd want to do, I'd be down. Maybe the loot color would be white with a black outline, or vice versa. Give it that same division symbol that exotic drops have. Make them feel rare and rewarding to acquire. So let's imagine these were to come true in a Division 3. We would have exotics, which could then acceptably be more of a one-time acquisition with a reconfiguration system or something similar, and then you have these black market items. How would they fit in? I would envision them having the same stats as a high-end gear item would, and then of course having this talent slot for you to fill in. Now the way that you would create a long-lasting reward grind, in my opinion, would be that whenever you first try to equip the item, it forces you to create your talent, and then it's locked in. You could still recalibrate the attributes, the same as any other piece, but if you want multiple variations and choices within that talent creator, then you'd have to acquire multiple black market items. They could even have a different talent creator selection for every gear item, some active, like the example I gave, and some more passive. There's a ton of options. And like I said, since there's the limit of the point bank, you ensure that these items wouldn't be overly powered or greater than the other normal talents or items in the game. The allure there is because you get to tune it exactly how you want, but you keep it from being OP and stomping on everyone who doesn't have one of these rare items. Now I also gave some thought on how these might fit into the loot game and drop tables. What would be a fair yet rewarding way to implement these items in order to keep people chasing them for a long time? Well, I'd weigh the drop chances heavier on those upper tier content, stuff like heroic, legendaries, the raids if they were to exist, uh, the incursions, PvP, all that. So you're incentivized and rewarded for participating in higher difficulty stuff. But at the same time, I'd also make these items craftable with a high cost of a black market material. Now I don't know how you do it, but you could distribute these materials around the game as well as in lower difficulties to give the more casual players the chance to obtain these items as well. So if you participate in more pinnacle content, you have a good chance of seeing these items drop every now and then. But then at the same time, maybe if you complete different projects or daily missions, you're rewarded with one or two black market materials at a time, and you can use, I don't know, 30 or 40 of them to craft a black market item. I feel like it would be a pretty fair system to provide an awesome new item in the game to chase, accessible to both the hardcore audience and more casual players at fair rates to each. Okay guys, well I think that's about all I have to say on the topic of reward within the franchise. I hope you guys liked it. I know it was a bit out of the box, so hopefully at the very least, even if you don't necessarily like the talent creator idea, you can respect the innovation because at the end of the day, I think this franchise needs some real innovation if they want Division 3 to be the real success that all of us know it has the potential to be. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. Definitely head down to the comments and let me know all of your thoughts on the create your own talent idea. I'm sure there's some holes you guys could poke in it, so if you have any potential improvements, let me know, or maybe you have a better idea on how to bring real reward back to the game. Leave it all down in the comments. I'm very curious what you all think. Thanks everyone, have a great day, and until the next one guys, Rogue Gold, out.